Got a big battery from Vatcher Power. Oh, that's a beast. Look at that. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at this Vatcher Power 460 amp hour 12 volt battery. This is an absolute monster of a battery. It's equipped with a metal case, has handles up here to carry the battery around. It has a Bluetooth BMS. It's rated at 300 amps continuous, which is insane. I haven't had a battery. I don't think that could push out 300 amps. Even the dumb fume 600 amp hour battery was only rated at 250 amps. So this thing's pretty beefy. 460 amp hours, that's over 5,800 watt hours of capacity in just one battery. It also has low temp charging protection. They rated at 5,000 charge and discharge cycles. It weighs 104 pounds and comes with a five year warranty. And they say this thing's capable of powering a 3,800 watt load literally by itself. So that's amazing the amount of output you can get out of just one battery. Also in the box, you get the user manual, you get a sticker sheet, and they're actually look pretty nice. User manual has all the same specs we kind of just talked about, gives you some charge and discharge curves. So pretty nice. We've reviewed a few Vatcher batteries on the channel already, one of their server rack batteries, one of their 12 volt batteries, and we've had very good luck with these batteries. And I've seen these batteries around for a pretty long time now, and I've seen a lot of other people make videos on these batteries. And I think overall, Vatcher is one of the, I would say, legacy brands. They've been around long enough to where a ton of people know what they are. And for the most part, the build quality on all their stuff seems to be pretty good. Although this battery is very heavy, I'm gonna place four 100 amp hour batteries next to this. That way you guys can get an idea how much space savings you're actually gonna get running just one of these versus four standard size 100 amp hour batteries. So here's a really good size comparison. We got the Vatcher battery by itself and then four 100 amp hour batteries all separate. And not to mention, you'd have to wire all these batteries in series. You have to deal with four different BMSs. If you want to have Bluetooth and you don't have the same battery, you have to use four different Bluetooth apps, if it even has it. So that's kind of one of my favorite things about these large form factor 12 volt batteries. It really does clean up a lot of extra space and the wiring is way easier. All right, so I have the battery fully recharged. We have our little current chunk right here. I went ahead and reset everything to zero. We're going to put a 0.2 C load on this battery, which is going to be about 90 to 92 amps. We're going to be using the Sun Gold Power Low Frequency Pure Sine Wave Inverter to run a battery charger to give us our load. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that on, turn our battery charger on. So we're about 89 amps. That's about as close as I can get without overshooting our 0.2C goal. Right here is going to be the total amp hours. Once the battery is completely discharged, we will get our final result there. We're going to let this run until the battery's BMS completely shuts down. Should take about five hours. All right, we just finished the capacity test on the Vatcher battery. And we got a total of 471.39 amp hours. Now this battery so far has proven pretty good, but now we're gonna do some high current discharge testing. The BMS on board is rated for 300 amps. So if we're gonna use this for like a trolling motor or something like that, I think it would work amazing, but we really don't know until we test that. I'm gonna put as much as we can put, and I'm gonna let that load run sustained amount of time just to see if this thing overheats or does anything weird. So I have a space heater, and then I'm also gonna connect a battery charger, and that should get us right around 3,000 watts of output. We're gonna use our current shunt, once again, to monitor the current, and the battery is fully recharged. Hopefully you guys can see the current okay. So we're gonna get that as high as we can. The battery charge is already on. That's 1100 watts of power, almost 1200. Now I'm gonna cook on this 1500 watt space heater. All right, we're holding strong at 237 amps. This is two gauge wire. It's really not rated for this kind of power, but we're gonna keep pushing it. I'm gonna install a Y splitter so we can add more loads. We're at 240 amps. That's 2,995 watts on the DC side. Actually, I hope my 250 amp fuse doesn't blow. All right, I'm gonna swap my fuse out because I don't wanna pop my nice fuse. So I got a bigger fuse now so we can pull more power. We're gonna go straight up to the max load. 260 amps, 270, 280 amps. All right, that's 300 amps right there. We're gonna see if anything shuts off. There it is, we're running 312 amps. That may not be enough to trigger the high current protection. That's 3,800 watts of power coming out of the battery. That's really impressive. And these wires are getting pretty hot. Well, it looks like that's as hard as I'm gonna be able to push the battery. We made over 300 amps and the battery seems to be holding just fine. The voltage is still above 12, which is really good. On some cheaper batteries, I've seen that drop below 11 at even 200 amps. Next, we're gonna open this thing up and take a look at how it's built and see if we see anything cool. All right, starting with this panel here where our power switch is at, we pop these four screws out. This panel's gonna come down and it looks like we can actually get to our BMS inside of there without having to take the entire battery apart. We have our main wires here and here. Now from the BMS, we have three, what appear to be six gauge wires bolted to the BMS. Everything is heat wrapped or sheathed with this heat wrapping stuff. This wire right here for our main power switch is all loomed up. They even put a zip tie to help secure that guy. And then inside here, that's gonna be for your Bluetooth setup. So that's the antenna that's gonna go to the BMS. There's kind of a close up of the BMS for anyone who's wondering. That's all the info on it, says 300 amps. 
It's really amazing. I'm feeling the BMS right now after we just pulled over 300 amps from it and it's barely warm. The wires are actually warmer than the BMS itself. So that's cool. All the connections feel stone cold. So we have really good connections there. And overall, everything in here looks really good. And it's really cool that you can just pop this cover off and access the BMS. So I assume if you did have any trouble with this, you could pop this open, service it, do what you need to do, put the cover back on. All right, popping this main cover off, being really careful not to short the main supply wires. So kind of what we can see here, we have very robust, very large bus bars making our main positive and main negative connection to the BMS like we just saw. The wiring is very thick. They're very nicely crimped connections, very thick lugs on those connections. Same thing right here for your main negative and your main positive. You also have two extra wires here and those are gonna power the BMS, I assume. So those go straight to the power switch and then to the BMS. The main connections where you actually make your connections out as well, those are also barely warm. So those are really fat connections, really thick connections right there that can handle a lot of amperage. Kind of a staple of all the Vatra batteries that we've taken apart before is they always bolt their terminals to the batteries. So it makes it actually possible to service the battery. But just because they're bolted doesn't mean it's built any better. If anything, you have to build it better when you do this because these have to be very well torqued properly not to create any heat. There's your balance wire there. There's another balance wire there. They're actually bolted and then they put this compound over it in order to help secure it and protect it from vibration. You can see our balance harness running up here. They even put a little thing there that sticks down to hold the wiring down. They definitely don't have to do that. The wiring would definitely just stay in here without that, but that's something extra they added to help clean the wiring up and make sure none of this stuff moves around. Right here, there's a black wire. That's the temp sensor. So we're gonna be able to test the low temp cutoff feature. There's some sticky foam. We can pull this off. Here's a good look of all the cells. So there's a, it is a 4S 2P configuration. So there's four groups of two cells in parallel to give you your 12 volts. So very thick bus bars, like we kind of said before, all bolted connections. Balance harness continues back here. Also very clean. I like how they laid that out right in the middle. We have metal bracing here and here that does not cover the vents for the cells. So those guys can still breathe if need be. These giant bars here provide compression and support for the case. In here, we have additional ribbing to give the case more rigidity. All around the battery, we have these fiberglass insulation sheets. So here, here, and between the cells, there's actually foam. And then between both groups of cells, there's also some more fiberglass boarding. So none of the cells have the opportunity to chafe or rub on the case, possibly damaging the cells. Nothing really moves. Everything feels really tight. I'm gonna take this bar off. So maybe we can look at the QR code and see what kind of cells these are. This thing did do really good in the capacity test. So I expect these to be pretty good cells. I did go ahead and decode the QR code on the cells. On the cells themselves, it says LF230, 736 watt hours. And when we check the code, it says they're EV power LF230 cells. Look at that. And they're within the same year that the battery is manufactured. So that's really good. EV makes really awesome cells. So they're using really high quality cells in this battery pack. I'm gonna try to remove the temp sensor, which they have taped and glued down right here. So I'm gonna remove that and we're gonna stick it in some freezing water and see if the low temp cutoff works. Oh, there we go. The light on the charger just turned green, which means the low temp charging feature works. Now let's warm this back up and see if it'll start charging again. There it goes, it started charging in. So that does work as designed. That's gonna wrap up us testing and reviewing the Vatrier 460 amp hour 12 volt battery. This thing performed really good. The build quality looked amazing and Vatrier is the only battery brand so far that I've taken apart where the cells are bolted together, making this thing truly, truly serviceable. I say that in a lot of my other videos about batteries saying, you know, you can open them up, especially if they have a metal case. It's simply unscrew the case, you can replace cells. But a lot of batteries, since they spot weld it, makes it very difficult for most people to do. You have to really want to do that in order for it to make it possible. But in my opinion, this thing is truly, truly serviceable. I've reviewed two other Vatra power batteries on this channel, a 100 amp hour 12 volt battery and a 48 volt serve rack battery. And both of those batteries were built just as good. And in fact, I think this thing's built even a little bit better than the 12 volt battery, the 100 amp hour version. So it's a big upgrade. Vatra has been around for a while now, so I do believe they have products that you can actually count on. If you're willing to spend a little bit of extra money, I do think you do get a lot of value with this battery, especially if you're doing things with campers, RVs, and things like that, where you wanna be able to put this in a battery hold, not really worry about it. The Bluetooth is nice because you can remotely monitor the battery. If it is somewhere tucked away, you don't need to access the terminals directly to know kind of what's going on with this thing. This is probably gonna be one of my favorite 12 volt batteries to use from here on in the future when I start doing more 12 volt projects. This is more than likely gonna be my go-to battery for that. As always, thank y'all so much for watching. Please let me know y'all's thoughts, concerns, comments, and real world experiences with this battery in the comments. I'm sure me and everyone would love to hear about it. Good, bad, the ugly, I wanna hear about it all. Thank y'all so much for watching. If you made it to the end of the video, that means a lot to me.
Subscribe for more, and I'll see you all in the next one.